I've got the um, the E310 here. I've got a antenna connected to one of the um, TXRX ports. I have this mod, um, headset, which has a little microphone on it. Um, I've got the USB serial connected up so, so that I can show you the console. Like that in as well. And um, I also have this Ethernet cable connected so that I can access the file system from my laptop. And I will now boot up the device and plug the terminal. Okay, so I'm going to get that power cable. Alright, so there's our little bootloader running a RAM test. That's putting the kernel. And oh, by the way, I should add. During the um, the more um, the more scintillating parts of, of this little demonstration, like right now, I wanted to point out that um, our cellular Kongs guru Tom over there has actually got the full OpenVTS stack running on one of these devices, and it's currently over the boot. So it's actually running now. So if you want to pull out your telephone, search for networks. You have an unlocked GSM phone. What should it appear as? What 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 would be the? Uh, Test network, but it, with the uh, you know MCC codes and so on. Yeah. MCC. Right. It's all the, all the default OpenVTS stuff, right? So people will make, be able to make calls. People will be able to send texts. I believe you'll get a text from the stack from 101, and then you can text back the telephone number that you want to use, seven digits or something. And then um, you know if you want to just randomly stand up and, and shout out your telephone number, people can give you a call. I, I've got my mobile phone on me; they're all over there, but. But um, that's always a bit of fun. All right, so we've got the login prompt there. That's on the serial console. I'm going to also, uh, this, is, um, this is a bit tricky with the, with the thing. Um, all right, so what I'm going to do first is I've got this, this little HT here. And um, I've, got, I've got a B200 as well. And so what I'd like to show you is um, how you can make flow graphs in GRC and then by just Dropping down one of the block was just a little bit of, bit of code I hacked together for this. Um, it'll actually transfer that flow graph to the E300 and run it on the E300 instead. So first, I'm going to transmit a signal from this B200 to this just to prove that you know things things work. <laughs> Get the idea. What I want to show you though here is that um, let's just let's just stick with this one. Before, just then I was transmitting from, from this. If you look over here in this flow graph, see this is run remote from a white. Okay, so that's too many wireless devices. <laughs> okay, so run remote. You see here, you essentially just put in the the um, thing you would add for SSH and SCP. And you can have these other options as well. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the fact that this is um, a GUI and just let it run as a console application, um, so that it, it um, runs on the um, on the device. So I'm just going to switch off these GUI elements. Now yell if you see another anything else. Yep, is that that looks good now? So now, if I launch this, it's just copied this flow graph to the E three hundred, and it's going to boot it up in the same way. It's just um, loading everything into memory, programming a PGA, doing the normal UHD thing. So that's. And you can see the little red ATR light on the on the TX port. And I can hopefully convince you some more by disconnecting the antenna from the V200 to prove that I'm not actually using V200. 
Um, and then, so that's that's running there. The other cool thing is that you can close this as you would uh, a normal console app, close the window, click on the red uh, button on, on GRC. But let's say that you want to deploy it and then, you know, if you have a portable battery pack or whatever, just go, go for a, I don't know, a jog with your E310. You can turn, turn this, this screen on, instead of just running it in an SSH bash session and run it in screen. So if I were to run it again, then I should be able to do, um, you've, got, you've got this console session, so you can just kill it. But it's still running here, so you can pull out the network, pull out the serial console, all that kind of jazz, and then, and then take it with you. Um, and then it's running in screen in the, in the actual CPU on board. So if you log in, then you can do it that way. I mean, I could have you know, resumed the screen session as well. Um, but you know, that, that's just another way of, of experimenting with that. Um, so we can go for something a little bit more complicated now. Let's do some digital comm. So what I'm going to do is on the host PC here, I'm going to run, sorry, the screen resolution is too small. Here we go. I'm going to run this flow graph here, which takes in UDP packets of codec to uh, encoded audio. So that's just going to sit here to output on my laptop speakers. And so I'll hook them up to those, those two um, speakers down there. And then I'm also going to run this um, RX program that's going to run receiving these packets on the B200. So it's just, it's just getting noise now. So let's trigger on channel two and we get a signal. <coughs> and then on the E300 or E310 really, we're going to run the PDU transmission program like this. It's going to start it up and it'll just wait for packets to arrive on a UDP port that will then modulate with GMSK and send on, on, on the same frequency. That's just sitting there waiting. And now I'm going to run the codec to transmitter on the device as well. And I mentioned before that I had this little headset here. So that, I think that might be working now. And you can see there, there's the packet. So the green is the magnitude and the actual GMSK um, demodulate waveform can be see there, seen there. So if I turn my volume up, Test, 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 one, two, three. So that's what's going over here. Get a bit of feedback there. Disconnect the antenna. Reconnect the antenna. And if you look very carefully, actually, I can show you. Get a bit of ear going in. You can see the red ATR light blinking because the audio source is obviously sampling from the microphone on the E300. It's going into the codec 2 vocoder and then producing a certain amount of data that's sent over a high bitrate link. So it pushes that data out and then there's some idle time and it keeps sending that data over again. So that's, um, that's codec 2. The last thing I'd like to show you, and you can just shut these down pretty easily like this. And these ones as well. That one went. The last thing I'd like to show you is actually something on the device. So I'm actually logged in now, and I'm going to go to a directory. Just one second. So this is some um, sort of spectrum monitoring code I've been working on, uh, on and off over the sort of course of the last year. More when I go on road trips and drive around with all sorts of crazy antennas stuck to the roof. Um, it, it's a good way of automate, automating the, the recording process. But I've copied those files onto the E300 as well because one obvious use case is sort of remotely deploying these nodes to do some spectrum monitoring. So what I can do is I can run the scanner. Sorry, two hands. And 
And so I programmed it to look at the GSM mobile band, and it will just sort of step through frequencies uh, in that band and record them, in this case, to the flash drive. And you can you know, have other options, external storage and what have you, or just run some sort of algorithm to pick out interesting signals and uh, store that metadata on the device itself. So that's, well, let's record one more. There we go, it's just stepping through the um, sort of higher 800 band. And then on my laptop, because I have the file system mounted over SSH, I'm going to run the Spectrum Viewer app, and this is going to read in those files that were recorded, and then run the FFTs and stitch them into one wideband FFT. So I'll just let it, let it do its thing there. And there we go, that's the mobile band, and you can see all sorts of activity happening there. The red is the, the peak values in all the bins, the blue is the average value, and the green is the, the minimum. So with this sort of a plot, you can tell when there are constant signals or burst of signals, because that will change the maximums and the minimums and the average and so on. And that was just all recorded using the uh, BD310. Uh, so that's, um, that's what I got. Hope you get your hands on one at some point and, and have a bit of a play. It's good fun. I have time for a question or two while I set up the next presentation. Question down the back. Definitely cross compile. In fact, Phil gave me a hard time about that this morning. Um, and I think, Jonathan, you said if you were to attempt to compile GNU Ready on the device, it would take a little bit of time? Well, about 14 hours, so it's probably a better idea to, to cross-compile. And, and right. Phil, Phil, where are you? Oh, there you are. He, he's the open embedded guru, and um, and I think you've got some pretty nice packages to enable cross-compilation, right? Um, so it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward. I think what he's saying out there is we've... we've we're trying to document all this stuff on the Good Radio website. So if you go to the wiki, there's an embedded page and it describes all of this stuff. You can even just download the SDK that will support the Zinc chip uh, directly from the website. Or it gives you instructions to use. Okay, it might be a little bit old enough to, well, Philip and I probably do have to uh, get together on that. But the instructions for building yourself are also all there. So you, we're trying to give you everything to make it easy for whichever purpose you want to apply it to. 